So you want me to stop it? No. situation at the airport we had kind of the delay on stuff when we got here Devin started school I started playing you know the, the games and stuff started picking up I had like a couple of small injuries um, stuff like that so it's kind of been a how long have you been here? Two months. We got here August 18th. We've been here almost two months and um, first of all I haven't I haven't gotten any vlogs out because right when I was about to start you know uh, Recording and editing, I, I did record, but I didn't have an opportunity to edit because uh, I took my laptop on the road to from a scrimmage and I left it when I was leaving in a hotel. So they had to send it to me. Then when they sent it to me, they ended up sending the wrong computer. We didn't even know it was the wrong computer for like a week because I just didn't open the box. Maybe I did, I didn't. They sent it to me in the box. I didn't open the box because I was just doing a lot of running around and stuff, and we were busy, so I didn't really do anything with that. Um, and then she opened the box when I was at practice because she had to do something. Or no, you need to. Well, I, I need to charge it. Yeah, I should charge it. And she just told me this isn't your computer. This that process alone was like two or three weeks in itself. Yeah, we're. I mean, we're here and pretty much settled now. I mean, yeah, we've. I've gone shopping for the apartment and we've decorated to how we wanted it to. Um, we should do like give them. Let them see the apartment when I yeah, when it's clean. clean. Yeah. So what happened when we left? Basically we we live in Atlanta, so we find out of Atlanta at Hartsfield. We get there, you know, normally at any flight the uh, check in area closes like an hour before your flight. We got there about five to ten minutes before that that time was supposed to be. So let's say it's at one fifteen, we got there at one ten, one oh five. I personally didn't know that though. I didn't know that the checkout counter closes before you fly. You never flew over? Yeah, yeah, but I'm always there on time, so I never. It was kind of our fault when you think about it, but. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't necessarily blame the airline, but I blame the lady who, mm -hmm. who, was t who we were talking to because we got there. I, I told Kiana to run inside, like, start the ticket process. She always keeps all our passports and stuff together anyway, so I was like, so the process of getting our boarding passes, I was, me and Lil Devin bring all the bags in. Kiana's mom drove us, so she took uh, herself, Aria, and a couple small bags inside and started the process. Me and Lil Devin came maybe a minute later with the bags, not even a whole minute maybe, you know what I'm saying? Just We got all the stuff out the car and started bringing it inside, and the lady was like, no, 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 I can't take y'all. And I was like, what happened? What are you talking about? And Kiana was like, she started the process and then she said she can't because the bags. The bags. Now, I was like, too many bags. I was like, how is that even possible? We have, to me, in my mind, I think we have a place on the plane no matter what. We are, we have purchased tickets for the flight. So no matter the, the baggage, it shouldn't matter because we have reserved seats. And we're there an hour. If, even if it was, we had within an hour to get to the flight. So I feel like that's plenty of time to put our luggage on the plane. Right, so didn't make any sense. What? Easily, that process from start to finish was easily the most stressful thing I've ever dealt with in the airport. 
The lady, but long story short with her, she we talked to her for at least 10 minutes. So she's like, yeah, it's really too late now. I was like, well, we got here on a certain time, in a certain time frame, we, we spoke to you. You started our process and then you say you can't take us. She said, you, she didn't say this to you, she said this to me. She said, I thought it was just a woman and a, and a daughter. She was like, when you two came out, I, I couldn't take you. So I'm like, whatever, bro. Um, but when I got there, I told the lady it was four people. So the lady who was taking our tickets knew that it was four of us. I guess the supervisor did know. I instantly got on the phone with the team, like my agents, just told them what was going on because, you know, at the end of the day, they obviously need to know what's up. While I was doing that, she was going to uh, other airlines, kind of seeing what other flights. Options we could have. Yeah, what options we had. There were no more flights that day. We had to wait two more days. And we already had all of our luggage at the airline. Everybody was already out and we were fully packed up. So it was kind of difficult to be like, okay, let's go home. Yeah, like if, Figure life out, wait for two days. You pack up for a 10 month trip. You pack up everything that you have to bring. Like you leave out a lot of clothes and stuff like that, but you really pack up your entire life and throw it in the suitcase. Your day-to-day so, -day item. So it's not easy to go through your luggage and unpack all your day-to-day -day Small items. certain things that you need for just to make it two more days. Yeah. Like, ain't nobody, we didn't want to do that. So we ended up finding another flight through, was it Delta or something? Mm -hmm. To, uh, where did we go? Milan. No, Germany, Frankfurt. Yeah, we flew to Frankfurt, Frankfurt first. Um, we had to pay for that flight because we didn't want to uh, Wait for the team. They went through a travel agency. Well, they, they were told us to look for a flight, and they, they told us to look. see if they could reimburse us. They told us to look, but they were also six hours ahead. And most of these teams, when they book flights, they book through a travel agency. Mm -hmm. So the travel agency they went through was obviously closed. So we find a flight. We ended up paying for it ourselves with the hope that we get reimbursed. Um, it took us probably like an hour. An hour just to get our tickets. And the person was like, it took like two or three people. Like, it was a lot. It and the lot. flight was, so we were supposed to leave at like 4.15. 4, 4 and the next flight was at like, um, was six Delta something. 6 something. Yeah, so you so, see that window wasn't like yeah, big. Yeah. Luckily, we, we, we happened to be dealing with somebody that was very patient, very willing to help because Honestly, it was it was a it was a stressful situation. Uh, I would say Delta overall was really excellent because the, when we first got there, he was like, "This, this flight is sold out." Like, didn't he say that? He's like, "This flight is sold out." Right. We we're like, I, I just looked at it like you know, God continued to open doors throughout the process. Like, even though it was something very difficult. There was never a moment where everything was just shut down. There was no options. Right. You know, at, at any given moment, if we stay persistent and focused, we continue to find options. You know what I mean? So uh, when I got on the plane, I cried because there was the stress of we just spent all this money for a plane ticket. We might not get it reimbursed. The overwhelming feeling of it all. Aria spilled something when we were on the plane. Our seats to work what I prefer them to be, they were... They Normally, were like, we like, to, we like to upgrade our seats to business because I'm obviously very tall and we have two kid, kids. Yeah. So whatever seats we get, we normally pay a few extra dollars, a few extra hundred dollars and upgrade our seats to business just so we can have a little bit more room in our row or whatever. So so that's what I was looking for to spend money on. Because the plane was full, we didn't have that opportunity. The, the first class was available, but like... They wanted what, 8000 per ticket? Yeah, I was like... like that's not even an option. We get to Germany and we go to our gate. We missed that flight. There was supposed to be a gap in between the time where we landed and we could get to our next flight. The, they had just basically boarded the plane. No, that, he said they were gone. When I spoke to him and I looked at the gate, they had just, like the person was still at the desk and all. Yeah, like, the door was she closed. was like, that, that plane. But the plane wasn't there, you remember? It was gone. Yeah, well. Uh, we basically were in a situation where we had just missed it by maybe like 10 minutes or something. So And we had to do passport checks. It was a yeah. lot. We had to go through security. Yeah. It was a lot. <laughs> when you fly international in general, it was, sometimes it can be tough if you're not flying direct. Like we had, this is the first time in a while we had a, this type of situation. Like normally, and we flew to Israel, we, we, we flew from Atlanta to Paris to, excuse me, to Israel. And Paris' airport is not like that. But I think, you know, every country has their own COVID protocol and all that other stuff. So you have to go through extra steps. And Germany was just one of those ones that was a little much. So we had to ask the, the team to 
find another flight out of this airport now, out of Franklin. We were there for not that long. It was only a few hours. Um, we were going to be there all day if we would have waited for the later flight, but when he called the team, they got us a flight, but it wasn't until the city that we were supposed to be flying. Right, it was to Milan. It was to Milan, which was an hour and 15 minutes away. So now we have to fly an hour. And then drive an hour. But and then I drive wasn't, out. We were in a small car, but it wasn't like super cramped. It wasn't that Because cramped. you want to know why? We didn't have any luggage. Yeah, we had no bags. They, they came with two cars to take us, one for our luggage, one for, for the family, but they never yeah. sent our luggage from Germany to Italy. Two of our luggages were still in Atlanta and the rest of them were in Germany. So we didn't have any bags. We, we, we got here. We didn't have any bags for almost a week. Yeah. No bags. Like nothing for I couldn't I couldn't practice with I had to buy shoes when I got here, socks, stuff like that. She had to buy clothes for the kids. Kids didn't have no toys, nothing. We didn't have anything. We had like our carry-ons, obviously. So like the kids had a carry-on, she had her purse and a carry-on, I had my duffel bag. That's that was it. Whatever we had in that was it. And that was rough for a while too. It was a tough situation when we first got here. But when we first when we actually first got here, we took the biggest sigh of relief of like, whatever, bro, we're finally here. You know, after all that. And I think with the help of seeing where we live and our place, it was more it made it like Cause now we don't have to deal with something else on top of it. We like where we live, we like the place, so we're like, okay, we can get in here and get comfortable because we're fine. The thing is, when you're coming overseas, you never know what to expect. You never know what the city may look like. You never know what your housing may look like. Like, so when you land, it's literally like a culture shock. Culture I was, I would say that as a shock. player, as a player, you have an opportunity to potentially speak to a, players who was there before to ask about that type of stuff. And, well, you speak to the wise, but still you can speak to someone and make it tell you something, but you have to like see it for yourself and be yeah. like, okay. Because what's, what someone else may not like, you may. So yeah. like there's, we live in uh, what our what our manager calls a historical building, which is basically like they kept some things from the old, you know, time or period or whatever. Like they kept the doors, the doors aren't normal doors. They so look like- floor. Yeah, the, the, we have hardwood floors. The entrance to our building is like these real tall uh, wooden doors and stuff like that. Like, our elevator is this big. Yeah, that's crazy. They should have <laughs> fixed that. But we'll, I'll, I'll show you probably the next few vlogs, the, the apartment and everything like that, so you can understand what we're talking about. But with that, to go with what he said, it is in like an old building. Some things are like still old, but they modernize modern yeah. our apartment. Yeah, they renovated so, like it's like they did half and half. One yeah. half of the apartment is like renovated, and the other half is it's not that it's not nice, it's just old. Like they have the hardwood floors on one side of the, the apartment, and the other half is just is regular floors, regular but doors. I personally, and I think you could agree with it, appreciate the uh like older stuff that is in the apartment. It's not like oh, we're like oh my gosh, I don't yeah. want this here. It's like oh, this is so nice. And we we live in the the center of. Well, they call it the city center. So it's basically like the area where everybody comes to shop and eat, have coffee. There's a lot of local businesses and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's we, very loud at night. Yeah, from basically like Friday, Thursday night to Sunday, there's always like a gang of people walking around. So, um, you know, at times that can be a little annoying, but I think that realistically, even though where we, where we live is like, Super nice and stuff, and it's it's, it's a situation where that we really really wanted to be in. Um, leading into it, I sent a text message to Keanu on the plane. We were sitting on our last flight from Frankfurt to Milan. It was only supposed to be like an hour and some change or something, so it was a small plane. Yeah, it was tiny plane. Um, but we were sitting on that flight, and I was like, um, I sent her a text and was just telling her like anything worth having or worth doing or whatever is going to be difficult at the beginning. You know, nothing's, nothing's ever easy and I compared it to childbirth. When you give birth to a child, it's, the whole process is difficult. And she knows that, obviously. Um, and we, we essentially gave birth to a new situation. Sometimes, you can ask some women out there, some pregnancies are super easy, some... When she had a little damage, she only pushed like five times and he was out. He was an epidural, so he was easier. But Some Aria... situations are easier. And Arya was a natural baby, and that one was very hard. So this this situation is was very hard at the beginning for us, and I believe it was for a reason. I, I think that God was really testing to see where our head was at, where our heart is at, 
see if we would start getting like really frantic and, and irritated or will we just continue to stay focused on what we know is our core and our, our morals and things like that. So um, with all that being said, that was just how we got here. 